We live in the age of what is often referred to as big data, that is, large data sets. It's almost impossible to look at the data set in its raw form and come to any meaningful conclusion about the ideas that these numbers represent. To make sense out of these large data sets, we construct what are called frequency distributions that are represented by frequency tables and histograms that we'll talk about later. Computers and calculators can easily sort this data into these frequency distributions or frequency tables. When the data set is put into a frequency distribution or frequency table, the frequency table partitions these data values into different classes. Each of the classes are given along with the number of data values in each one of the categories or classes. Here we see two sets of data, which are not particularly large, representing the pulse rates of females and males. However, looking at them, it's rather difficult to understand or draw any conclusion from the numbers represented here with any ease. This is the frequency distribution or frequency table that one would use for those exact same numbers from the female pulse rates. The numbers in the left-hand column represent the different categories or classes, and the numbers in the right-hand column represent the number of data values found in each one of those categories or classes. One of the terms or definitions that you need to know are class limits, specifically lower class limits and upper class limits. And here we see the lower class limits of each one of these classes. The lower class limits are the smallest numbers that can actually belong to the different classes. In a similar way, the upper class limits are the largest numbers that can actually belong to each one of the different classes. You can think of class boundaries as being similar to borders between countries. The border between the first class and the second class would be a number that separates the two such that there is no gap. If you were to consider the class limits, the upper class limit of the first class and the lower class limit of the second class, there's a gap between these two numbers. The class boundary, however, is the number that we would choose between those two such that there is no gap. So that the upper class boundary of the first class is the same as the lower class boundary of the second class. More simply put, the number between 69 and 70 is the number 69.5. Likewise, the number between 79 and 80 is the number 79.5. The number between 89 and 90 is the number 89.5, and so forth. If you consider the lower class limit of the second class, 70, and how we would get to the lower class boundary of the second class, you would do so by subtracting 0.5 to go from 70 to 69.5. The same has to be true for each of the lower class boundaries of these classes. Considering the lower class boundary of the first class, it has to be the number that we get when we subtract 0.5 from 60, giving us 59.5. It's going to be especially important to be able to find the lower class boundary of the first class for any frequency table or frequency distribution. This will be necessary when we use the TI-83 to graph the histogram representing this frequency table.